I want to explain to you just a little bit about each experiment and then between Mr. Hashi and ourselves we'll figure out and kind of seat you at the tables for the experiments. For the inclined plane, which is dealing with force and motion, um, who is interested in doing the inclined ex plane experiment? So you three. Oh. Yeah, make sure your name is where it says name. What you're seeing is something that we've called the Science Fair Frenzy. We wanted to do something with the grant from the Toyota USA Foundation. One of the things that we wrote into the grant was helping Sarasota schools and their teachers. This summer, we were working with a teacher from Lakeview. We asked her what is it that the teachers needed the most, and she said, help with science projects. Right up our alley, perfect. And we are really pushing to get that through elementary, all the way up through high school, and then possibly into the lower college levels, um, that a child can come in here and realize that this is a place to roll up your sleeves and do STEM. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to help you do your science experiment because you have to submit one for the science fair, and this is the first year you guys do that, so we're trying to help you out a little bit, okay? In school, I am in the science club, the science and technology club, because I'm really good at science and technology, and that's why I'm in the science and technology club, and I was chosen out of the few people that were chosen. So you'll measure this, put the water in, then what were you going to do with it? I was going to put 110 millimeters of water. Oh, very good. Okay, you want to choose 110. I think that's going to work perfect. We started out with their beginning, their question, what is it that we're experimenting on? Their hypothesis, what materials do you need? Then what steps do you need to do to do this project? Then we actually did three trials with them. Then we had them write their conclusion and then do their graph. All of these things are going to need to go in their posters that are going to go on their science project boards when they finish. All one together. So what do you think which one would be a high five? So which one would you think is the better? I think it's the soft and white energy because um, it, it, it leaves um, less energy than these two because life this one is like kind of like a uh, bouncy, so I don't think that every time like you flick it, it like bounce, so I don't um, think it'll last it. Plastic, just plastic. Okay, so that one's the LED, right? Plastic. And that one's the uh, incandescent, the one he has in his hand. And the what kind of, what kind of thing So that's the fluorescent, the compact fluorescent. And I sat at the table that was choosing each light bulb, and uh, the L, I think L, 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 uh, LAD lights was the lowest, the in incandescence was the highest, and the CFL was uh, kind of the medium. Science is one of my favorite like specials or like categories in school because it's fun to do like um, experiments and like you get to mix things up and it's just fun. Well, we went and we put cold water into four Pepsi cans and we timed the four and we timed the Pepsi cans with the water in them for a minute and we put the thermometer in it and then every minute we came back inside, we had basically took the thermometer out and measured the temperature. So let's write down our question. And the question is, that's awesome. There's a little of this time, it's good. The question is, does the height of an inclined plane affect the distance the car will travel, right? So that's our question? That's our question. We were with a bunch of guys, and we did, uh, we did uh, some trials about measuring cars, like when they went down a ramp, and see how far they got. Nice. Wow. Much further. So look at that. Gee. That's 91. Turning. Sorry. Plus. You stay on the mark. Like we were using the ruler to measure how far the car got, and if it went over 91, then we doubled it where we where the 91 went. And then if it and then it will keep on going. 
we were using color, color paper and testing them, it, going outside and testing them to see um, which one is the hottest. We had to get five different pieces of paper and we had to tape them and um, we wrote about what our, is our hypothesis and we after that we had to do our variable a variable and then we, we took them outside and at first it wasn't really working out well because it was windy and the papers were flying everywhere and so we had to get rocks and put them on and then uh, we had a timer and we had to set it for 10 minutes and so when we came back they weren't as hot as hot enough so we had to go to the other side of the concrete and then put them there for 60 seconds and then we had to get these uh, thermometers and with the with the lasers. If you pointed at something, pointed at me, what temperature are my hands? 90 degrees. Wait, 89. 89? 90? It was really fun. We had to do experiments on three different types of fruits. And um, we had to see which one produces more electricity. And so we put it in a little machine. I forgot the name, but it was a red little box. And you plug it into what's called like something like an alligator snipper. And then you plug it in and it tells you the number of electricity it has. So you're gonna connect okay, the alligator okay, clip so. to one penny, and what are you gonna connect on the other one with that, Pierre Yummy? The same one. To the, uh, to the nail of the other. Oh, the nail. Yeah. So just be careful; it stays in. Perfect. It was surprising that um, the orange was the highest produces electricity, but I was the only one who got lemon as my highest average. 38, We were doing salt and water. It was an exploration and we were putting our first trial was just normal water, next one was um, water with ice, then 5 milliliters of water and, uh, of ice, then 10 milliliters of, uh, of salt. And then we did our data and we got our conclusion. I didn't see any child just sitting around unengaged. Every child was really into it and there was like this background noise of a bunch of children talking and sharing knowledge and getting excited about things, especially when they were picking up things and demonstrating uh, to others what they were doing with them. Well, yes, in another center, they were testing out which light was gonna be better for to use in their house. And they were testing it out. They were using these things to look through inside of them, the heat energy they have inside of them. And it tells them the amount or percentage of heat it has inside. Go. Oh, you didn't turn yours on. Okay. Okay. Yes, and you look at it in the heart. Don't, don't, don't take the temperature yet. Don't take it until uh, four minutes is our. Oh, we can watch it, right? Yeah, sure. Watch it if you want. But don't look exactly at the heart. Like, it's slowly getting hotter. Me too. My skin hotter. 100 and, uh, 107. But it's 108. Probably, you guys, it's probably best to hold it from the same spot so that way we're Mine's taking the same Do you see how close he's holding it? Do you see how far he's holding it? Let's hold it closer like this, guys. We're hold it at the same spot. 125. Yeah, that's good. 103, it's kind of fun and kind of hard because it's fun that we all like get along and play. But when it's uh, not fun, it's when like uh, we're uh, deciding, uh, oh, maybe the in inconsistency. No, I think the CFL 
So it was kind of hard, challenging, and then we all came to a conclusion that we were going to um, choose the inconsistence. And then we did some tests. My friend, my friend Jimmy and Douglas uh, did some, uh, ran the light bulbs. I did too. And Jimmy uh, was the one who mostly like, wrote everything down for the stuff, and that was very helpful. Douglas was the one that kept everybody uh, happy. And I was the one who kept like everybody like in charge. So it was very fun working with everybody. Using this whole concept of uh, making it real and authentic to them in their own lives actually inspires them to start talking and it usually provides a catalyst for them to once they start using these words which you were witnessing um, they're not afraid to speak themselves At first they were afraid of being wrong but uh, we teach with a growth mindset as well so they learn that uh, if I fail at something it's a seed for success and um, everybody's the children learn to encourage each other and they, need, they learn to get everybody to help each other rise up. Our hypothesis was what color would be the hottest? Because um, normally when you wear black, um, the, the sun beats down and you get really, really hot. My hypothesis was not correct at the end. I thought aluminum foil was going to be the best insulator, but at the end I realized that newspaper is the best insulator. My hypothesis was that it was going to make it colder, and my hypothesis was correct. Negative three? Negative three? Okay. Negative three. Wow. So the song, the, ten, the extra five milliliters made it so colder, didn't it? All right, so it looks like your hypothesis said the ice makes it colder. Yep. Starting to come true, right? So now we got to test it two more times. The way that education is going, this whole notion of when uh, somebody walks into a classroom, they should be expecting a background noise level. They should be expecting talk, they, but uh, you know, on, on topic, on, using it under a context. But I think the days of uh, classrooms being lined up and formally quiet, um, there is a time to be quiet, but for most of the day, I think uh, inquiry-based, full-blown, accountable talk, social context is the way to go in a classroom. Well, I love that we tr get to try new things and observe like and then when we do science we might learn something new like something that could be useful to help our community the lemons clean it's his cleaning the penny so go ahead and take a picture of yours you know, be careful okay and get a picture of your experiment yeah. Yeah. Yeah, your turn my friend picture of your experiment so far. We'll take a free, we'll go in sequence, okay? Keep it in order and better. Okay, I got it. I think the biggest thing is that I think schools need to start reaching out to the communities and bringing in the resources that are available. Um, Florida House is a great example. Um, I go over there often and I brainstorm with the informal types and how they see it because the Florida House also does field trips over there. So they talk to, to myself and my colleagues a lot about um, ways that they can get a wow factor out of something because they obviously everything you do it doesn't have the wow factor so we bring we actually bring children over there to experiment and try new things at the station and when they do that it really gives them a, a sense of like this is where we need to go what i get out of it is i get the enthusiasm back in the classroom so I, so again i get to take that informal um, aspects of it and bring the informal back into the formal classroom and energize the formal classroom. It's, it, and it really is starting to take off. I mean, we're in our baby steps right now, but I'm seeing more of this synergy between other groups and us actually authentically getting out of the classroom, going outside, walking around different campuses here at what we're calling the corner, and um, hopefully inviting other schools to do that as well.